another year, another Woolmark, we're back. And this time we focus on something completely different. So last year we looked at how much oil was used in the synthetic clothing industry. This year we actually looked at the fact that synthetic clothing is undying. They're zombies, they don't disappear. So the guys at Studio Birthplace came up with something really unique, which is what if we create synthetic clothing armies running through a city, not dying, and streaming into nature. It's a sort of a Wool War Z as our in internal joke. It is a very interesting idea. For me it was actually like, a, oh finally a project like this. So this project posed completely new sets of challenges for us. In this case we had to create crowds, like thousands of people running, but not the people themselves, the clothing, they would run by themselves. So before we even started shooting, we again created a completely accurate pre-visualization of the final result. And once we were happy, I started to design the pipeline. And I figured out the planning and basically structured everything from start to finish before we even went to Cape Town and shot this thing. To make sure everything ran smoothly, I decided to have a certain set of rules on set. First, I wanted to have a LiDAR scan of every location, meaning they 3D scanned the entire set and we knew that these models we could use in our system later down the line to have collisions and shadows and everything appear correctly. Secondly, it was essential that we had practical clothing interacting with our environment on set. So we came up with this sort of reverse vacuum cleaner. It's a huge tube and they would compress air through it and it would shoot all these pieces of clothing onto our set. To me, it was crucial to have that practical component in order to add realistic digital effects on top of it. The single most challenging thing for this entire project was designing the VFX, coming up with ways to craft what the vision required. Because I knew that once we got into the project, we would encounter all these obstacles that we could not necessarily see beforehand. And it was my task to actually create the crowd workflow and system. We needed to have like realistic crowd motion. We need to have the crowds to be able to go into cloth sims at any moment. You cannot really improvise that type of stuff. You really have to plan it out from the start. The main goal was that none of them were going to be identical in their looks and in their colors and in all the features that they had. And uh, the system that I wanted to design was that it was going to be fully random by default, but that it was also going to be fully directable by design. When I was lighting a scene, the characters would already be randomized. But of course, the directors would have a lot of requests. The system was so flexible that I was able to change this either in 3D. Uh, we could swap out any garment with any other garment, even after the simulation was already done. Or we could do it in compositing, where we would have automatically generated masks for each character, and then we could change the colors. There was a massive R&D period, which we started off with. And yeah, we definitely needed that to figure out, are all these systems going to work? Are we going to be able to do what we want to do? We basically wanted it to work nicely in a trial situation first. And for that, we had the shot in the street where we had the camera low. If stuff worked in there, we were confident it should be working on other shots. In the beginning, it didn't work as nice as that. And you sometimes have agents exploding, just flying off into space. <laughs> It's a non-linear process, right? So you start off developing a lot of time into different assets and different features. And then once you're there, suddenly you can actually start outputting. So that whole non-linear process, it's kind of challenging to plan. You need that time, you need the development time, because otherwise the train will come in, you know, and you're not fast enough building the train tracks. So we have crowd systems with thousands of agents. We've got cloth sims, we've got them running, we've got them tripping, we've got them falling, we've got them turning into cloth. So actually building that system is not just the most difficult thing about the project, it is the most rewarding thing once it's done. And it's amazing to see how the team actually managed to do it. The first thought that I had is like, how on earth are we gonna render all this stuff in a very, very timely manner? We wanted to get all of this rendered on a GPU-enabled renderer, uh, which meant that everything would go fast if it would actually work. And we decided on using Houdini as our main toolkit, and then render everything in Karma XPU using the Solaris USD workflow. One of the things which I really liked about using Karma, at first I knew it was going to be a pretty fast renderer because I've seen some examples, but the stuff that we were throwing at it, like hundreds or even thousands of agents and that combined together with all the cloth sims, I had a look at some of the stats and it was like well over the hundreds of millions of, of polygons and frames rendered within five minutes, seven minutes, something like that. But it took a long 
run up like the first uh, like one and a half months so this project was basically getting the system to work once it worked it was a very smooth process looking back at what we all put together with such a small team uh, yeah it's absolutely amazing i'm just really happy with the results yeah i'm definitely leaving this project with a sense of satisfaction because this is exactly the type of job that i like to do and went very smoothly in the end what we've got was an amazing awareness video that served as a commercial as well and when you look at the result I cannot be more proud of what we did.